Thank you, Tally. And I just want to echo thanks to everyone here for helping me put this thing up. It's no small task, and I really appreciate all the help. And even having the opportunity to show this work um, is, is, a, is a big deal. So thank you again. Um, it's really nice to be paired with uh, Linda Ridgway's exhibition, um, not just because I think she's an incredible artist, um, but I also, I think there's an appreciation for text and language that we both share. Um, and thinking about how the uh, literary world can intersect and commingle with the visual world. Um, so this piece behind me actually like grew out of a response to a particular piece of literature. A lot of my work for a while now has been in response to some kind of found text um, that I start with and I actually um, make drawings and then transcribe the text into the drawing. So you'll see where their words kind of creep in and out. Um, those are all taken from uh, a Ralph Waldo Emerson essay called Nature that he wrote in 1836, which was basically kind of the set forth the tenets of transcendentalism, which I won't go into right now, but it's a really beautiful writing and meditation on how we relate to and fit within the larger natural world. Um, and that is a theme that I have been interested in for a long time. Like Tally said, I grew up in Maine, um, down a long dirt road in the woods um, near the water. And so I was always outside and I was always having to deal with and enjoy the natural world. Um, so that has always kind of made, it's, it's never really left my work as an artist. Um, so uh, this piece, I actually started in the desert, if you can believe it. Um, I was uh, on an artist residency in Roswell, New Mexico. And um, for those of you that haven't been to Roswell, I, I loved the experience there, but it's, it's pretty barren and brown. Um, they have like a dust wind season. Um, I can see some people know they're shaking their heads. Um, so there's actually like a lot of, there's a lot of life there, but it's not um, very ostentatious. You kind of have to look around for it. And it's also some, some of the natural life is not um, the kind of nature that you might want to be intimate with, like crazy insects and all kinds of things like that. So um, as I was working there, I had this desire to create flora that wasn't physically around me. Um, so this piece started in 2013 or 12, I think it was. Um, and like I said, I started with a text and then I just started making drawings. And I mean, I can't tell you how many drawings are in here. It's definitely I think probably over a hundred pieces now at this point. Um, but I don't work with a plan, a master plan in mind. Um, I just start to draw. And then when I arrive in a space, that's when the work really starts to become, or get created is um, on the site. And it's a little improvisational that way. It never really fits together the same way twice. Um, and that's what I love about it because it kind of, the piece remains in flux forever, really. I don't really like finishing things, so it's a good way to kind of indulge that habit, um, to have something constantly growing and changing and morphing like the natural world does um, in its own glory. Um, so that's kind of the story behind this piece. It's been, it, when it was shown in Roswell, initially it was about 20 feet long and then it's, um, significantly grown since then and it's starting to grow this way too which is exciting to me um, to kind of relieve it from being so bound to the wall and then the other works in the show kind of grew up around this work um, they're all really new actually for me everything that's sort of over this way um, and when I knew I was going to show this piece again I was trying to think of things that would um, be like good kind of siblings to it. Um, but also, it's interesting that my work has kind of changed a little bit as of late, and it's uh, text is kind of falling away as a source and a raw material, and the figure, figurative notions are kind of coming back in, even though some of these things are a little bit watchful. I feel like, especially now with this new work, I was constantly starting to see faces appear in my studio um, and looking at a lot of like camouflage that's found in the natural world with the moths in the back there. Um, that was a big influence for some of this cut paper work around you. So uh, that's where the title comes in, which is Spellboken. Um, 
which is actually, it's a Swedish word for um, playbook, which I thought was a nice pun, and that I'm um, sometimes playing with books in my studio. But also I liked that it was sort of, it could be misread as like a misspelling of spell broken. So for me, it kind of resonated on these different levels of like marking this change in my studio that maybe this kind of literary spell that had been happening was uh, sort of snapped and, and new life was being kind of born out of that. So that's kind of where I'm, how I'm thinking about the other pieces around you all. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm sure I glossed over a lot, but yeah. Could you talk about your attitude towards Matisse? Towards Matisse? Well, I'm a big fan, for sure. I mean, drawing with scissors, I mean, that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing, for sure. Um, you know, and I think uh, the other thing about Matisse that I love is that there's a very lyrical quality to the way that he cut paper. Um, I think sometimes when people think about cut paper, there's a attitude that it's delicate and fragile and dainty. And I don't think that his cut pieces were anything like that. And it's something that I um, strive for as well, because I'm, I'm interested in this material operating in a, a lyrical way, but also a more aggressive way that kind of maybe bucks a little bit of the trend of it being um, so you know careful and quaint. Um, there's a lot of really beautiful cut paper work out in the world, but I'm kind of interested in reclaiming it to have this more aggressive, invasive like quality. And I think Matisse, you know, he, the way that he used cut paper, it doesn't have that, um, that dainty, delicate feeling either, which is something I really love about that.